So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Prosim for giving us an opportunity for presenting noise and vibration uh, analysis on automotive system. Okay. Uh, so my name is Umar Shankar. I represent from Desor System, a uh, similar center of excellence team. So if you look at a current uh, requirement in automotive, uh, if I want to buy a car, I would like to have a car which is pretty noiseless. I would like to listen to my radio and drive. And the kind of traffic what we have in Bangalore, we would certainly would like to use the radios more frequently than before. Okay? So in that kind of context, NVH plays a very important role in automotive industry. So if you kind of look at the noise and vibration that comes in an automotive, it could be from body in white structure, or it could be from powertrain, or it could be from other areas like brake squeal. Okay? So I'll talk about some of the brake squeal aspects, and also from the fuel tank vibration and so on. So there's a, uh, there's a very broad uh, landscape of vibration and noises that comes out of uh, automotive. So simulation plays a very important role in uh, predicting some of the noises that comes and the vibration in an automotive. Now, how Simula, Simulia as a brand in Dazzle System is going to help in addressing the noise and vibration? Now, more often, uh, our customers underpredict our capabilities in linear analysis because they know like Abacus is good for nonlinear. But when it comes to linear, they always underestimate our capabilities. We do have a very strong capabilities in the linear analysis. So I would like to focus my presentation on those lines. So in automotive, you have different kinds of workflows to predict the, the durability or the crashworthiness, like a portal impact or if there's a, a road bump. But with respect to the modal analysis, that's vibration and the noise, so we do have a broad spectrum of capabilities. Uh, starting off with a very simple uh, procedure, which is a frequency extraction. We also have other complex procedures like complex eigenvalue analysis, uh, response spectrum analysis, random response. We also have uh, capabilities with respect to substructure. Now, when we talk about substructure, uh, we, can, we can actually generate substructures, which is also called as super elements, which can accommodate the nonlinearities. Okay? Even, even though the substructure uh, responds linearly, but we can actually generate substructure on a nonlinear uh, uh, structures. Uh, in terms of the features, uh, we can accommodate the, uh, the preload effects. Uh, preload effects plays a very important role to accurately capture the natural frequencies, uh, so which I'll probably show you some of the examples, how critical it is to accommodate the preload effects. Uh, that's basically the manufacturing or your bolt pretension that's coming onto your structure. And we also have capabilities from acoustics and structure. We can do vibroacoustic analysis, uh, which can be uh, fully coupled or weakly coupled that kind of a uh, coupling can be accommodated within the, uh, the analysis procedure. Uh, we also have frequency-dependent material properties. Uh, you can accommodate uh, different kinds of uh, frequency-dependent properties, uh, which could be like prony CVs or coming out from your stiffness from spring dashboards and so on. Uh, in terms of performance, uh, we have a very strong uh, solvers uh, to accommodate the performance. That's an AMS eigen solver. So that's going to be my, uh, one of the topics which I'll be covering on. So in terms of the key differentiators uh, with respect to the NVH capabilities, uh, I can categorize into performance functionalities and advanced mechanics. In terms of performance, uh, if you kind of look at the current uh, industry, they would, like to inc they would like to incorporate all the complexities, all different parts into analysis. They don't want to neglect anything. So the degree of freedom keeps increasing and increasing. So you should have a solver which is going to reasonably run faster and give you a quick solution. So we do have a very strong solver for accommodating a very large uh, finite element models. And you can also extract uh, a different outputs of your model data uh, for large high frequencies. If you want to extract, we can, we can do that. Uh, in terms of functionalities, we can generate substructures which can be fully uh, uh, symmetric or it could be unsymmetric as well. So substructures can be unsymmetric provided you have very complex materials like rubbers, tires, and so on. Uh, in advanced mechanics, uh, we can have uh, nonlinear effects propagated to your uh, frequency domain. Um, you can have frequency dependent material properties. So, this is going to be a context of my presentation. So, let us look at the performance. Now, talking about performance, uh, so any linear analysis will typically start with a natural frequency extraction. Uh, Abacus, as a solver, has uh, three different kinds of uh, solvers. Uh, the default one is Lancho's Eigen Solver, which is a, which is a default. Uh, it's pretty good for moderate problems. If you have a significant high problems like large degree of freedom and you, in, you intend to extract uh, very high uh, Eigen modes. So AMS Eigen Solver is what we offer. 
It's called uh, uh, automatic multi-level substructuring I can solve, which can handle quite a big models up to uh, uh, 10 million degree of freedom, like a complete aircraft you can imagine. And you can extract a very large number of eigenvalues, eigenmodes, so some kilohertz of frequencies. So that's the kind of a problem I'm talking about here. So AMS Eigen Solver can actually address such challenging problems. The performance increases drastically using the solver. So here I have a few examples. Uh, here's a powertrain uh, model. Um, the conventional is basically the Lancho's Eigen Solver. And we have AMS Eigen Solver. You can see the kind of speed which we generate using AMS Eigen Solver. It's 14x. And we can go with a selective recovery. If you're not interested with all the outputs for all the regions of your geometry or from the mesh, you can go with a selective recovery uh, in requesting the outputs. Now, if I go with the full recovery, if I extract all the outputs for all my geometries, for all the substructures, which is a full reco recovery, certainly the speed drops down, but still it's far uh, superior than your conventional eigen solver, which is a Lancho's eigen solver. Now, we also, we also accommodate uh, the, the latest trend of uh, computational, like uh, using GPGPUs, like the graphical processing unit, for enhancing the performance. So we use GPGPU for solving uh, natural frequency in your AMS Eigen Solver. So as I said, AMS Eigen Solver is an automatic multi-level substructuring method. It has three phases. It does the substructuring, divides the structure into small chunks. And then it goes in a second phase called it extracts natural frequency and then assembles back to a global uh, natural frequency. Now, where does GPGPU is going to help us? GPGPU is going to help us in the second phase. So it's going to help in speeding up the analysis, uh, quick computation of natural frequencies, and it's going to give us a quick solution. So what is the typical speed? So you can just see how it really speeds up as you keep increasing number of GPGPUs in your solving. So this is basically for uh, 16 cores. So as I keep adding up more number of uh, graphic, I mean GP GPUs, you will certainly get uh, a better speed. So AMS Eigen Solver is one, which is in orange, probably it's red for you, and blue is uh, the conventional Eigen Solver. Okay. So let us move on to the functionalities. Now, when it comes to functionalities, if you look at this particular, uh, I mean any structure in this world is, has a nonlinear. Okay. But considering all the linear problems, that's the NVH problems, we always do it in frequency domain. Frequency domain doesn't allow us any form of nonlinearity. It's always linear because we use modal superposition technique. But since we have nonlinear effects which evolve in the structure, it's very important to capture this nonlinear effects and then superimpose it onto your linear analysis. Okay? So in that sense, what Abacus does is it allows you to perform all the static nonlinear problems or dynamic nonlinear problems where you can have all forms of nonlinearities. Let it be material nonlinearity, contacts, or it could be geometric nonlinearity. So you can, do, you can do such kind of analysis, take the updated stiffness, and use that stiffness for calculating a natural frequency, which is going to be much more realistic. So if you take a, a very simple flange, which is bolted joint, if you have a natural frequency computed for, without a pretension, and with the pretension, it's going to be different because the stiffness is different for, because for both those geometries. So that's what I'm talking about here. So it's very important for one to accommodate the nonlinear effects before your frequency extraction to be more realistic and be closer to the actual uh, natural frequency analysis. Just to back up my statement, here is an example from Ford. Uh, this is basically a, a suspension component where they have actually compared uh, the natural frequency from experiment with and without the preload effects. So if you look at the suspension system, you have different uh, preload effects. Your springs will be loaded up with an assembled uh, preloaded pre state, okay? And you'll have some manufacturing uh, induced stiffness. So if you kind of accommodate that in your analysis, you'll be much closer, closer to your uh, experimental result. That's what it kind of uh, validates in this particular case. Now when we talk about all these complex systems, uh, especially like tires, rubbers, mounts, engine mounts, they are pretty complex in, uh, in phenomena because they have, it's made up of rubbers. Now rubbers, since it's very complex, they tend to actually generate unsymmetric matrix. And especially when you try to generate a substructure that's a super element out of this structure, your super element can be unsymmetric in nature, which means that your mass matrix, your damping matrix, all of these things could be kind of unsymmetric in nature. So here I'm going to take, I'm going to show you an example 
how do you actually accommodate that kind of a structure into your analysis? So a typical workflow in automotive is, if you have to consider tire into your actual main uh, structures or in the main uh, vehicle, you have to follow a specific steps of sequence of analysis. So in the first sequence, you'll basically do a, a static nonlinear analysis. You take a tire, which is actually modeled up with rubber properties, rebars, and all of those things. You apply uh, inflation pressure into your tire and apply a footprint analysis. You capture the footprint. Then you actually take it to a steady state transport where you actually rotate the tire for a given speed of rotation. Whatever the speed, 60 kilometers per hour or 45 kilometers per hour, you rotate it. And then you generate a substructure on that particular state of rotation. So when you generate a substructure on that particular state of rotation, your substructure is going to be unsymmetric. Okay? Now you can use the substructure onto your global uh, structure, which is your complete vehicle, and then do your uh, acoustic analysis or your, uh, or your or steady state dynamics or random response, which is going to be much more realistic in sense. Now how is it going to be realistic? So in this particular example, I'm just taking only a tire. There is no vehicle here. So I'm just comparing a tire which is full model with a stationary tire and a, a tire which is rotated for 60 kilometers per hour. So as you see here, there is a, a difference in the result. So the green one is at a speed of 60 kilometers per hour. Uh, the blue curve is for the stationary tire. And a tire which is generated by substructure is the red dots. So you see that the substructure which you generate is very identical to the actual model which is 60 kilometers per hour. So the substructure what we generate out of Abacus is pretty close to the actual structure of your geometry. Okay? So you're not kind of uh, approximating too much because when we generate substructure, uh, we always assume that there's a lot of approximation. We're not capturing the actual response. But here is just a comparison where we're actually capturing the actual response for a substructure. Now let us try to uh, assemble the substructure of a tire which is rotated for 60 kilometers per hour onto the vehicle and then look at the response of the structure. So here is what we see as a response. We are kind of measuring uh, different points in the vehicle and we are seeing how it's different from static tire to a dynamic tire. So there is certainly a big difference in the solution. Uh, so it's very important for one to actually uh, take the effect of the rolling of a tire onto your vehicle to study the actual dynamic response, okay? Now, the other important concept is uh, the brake scale analysis. Now, brake scale analysis is a very important thing that OEMs do practice. The reason is brake scale actually uh, tries to actually capture the un unstable dynamic modes which causes the noise, a squeal noise, okay? So when you have a rotor and you apply a brake, uh, a disc which is going to rub a, 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 a rotor. So it's going to deaccelerate the speed of the rotor, which means that your friction is going to actually cause some kind of unstable response, or unstable modes, which can predict or cause some noise into your system. So the whole purpose of doing a brake squeal analysis is to identify the critical eigen modes, complex eigen modes, and try to avoid them. You have to bring out of your system. Okay, that's the whole purpose of doing a brake squeal analysis. So in this particular case, we have actually used a complex frequency analysis procedure, which would actually uh, predict your, your squeal modes. So the squeal mode is like 2.9 kilohertz is what we were able to predict as a, uh, a critical mode for your brake squeal. Now brake squeal analysis need not be performed only in frequency domain. You can certainly do it in time domain. So we do have explicit solver, which can also accommodate or capture the squealing effect, okay? So here, we can actually apply the pressure, maintain your pressure of the, the braking, and then we do have an internal post-processing technique to convert your time domain to frequency domain. That's your FFT method, okay? So the output, what you got in the previous complex frequency procedure was 2.9 kilohertz. In explicit solver, you get the same thing, 2.9 kilohertz. But which is the one which, which we have to use? Explicit solver is always expensive. Okay, it's always expensive, but complex frequency procedure or frequency-based procedures are always like relatively cheaper. Okay, so the result-wise, we're able to match between the two different techniques, time domain and frequency domain. Now, talking about substructure, Abacus offers a very generic substructure technique. Um, substructure can accommodate, as I said, all the nonlinear effects um, into the substructure. You can use the substructure with the third-party solvers, okay? So the third-party solvers could be Adams, or it could be your uh, 
a SIMPAC. I think you have heard about SIMPAC uh, by one of our colleagues from uh, Prosim who would have talked about SIMPAC today morning. So uh, you can accommodate this substructure into uh, SIMPAC to do a flexible multi-body dynamics. Okay? So the substructure capabilities in Abacus is very generic, uh, but it's pretty advanced where you can accommodate the nonlinear or the unsymmetric uh, FX. Now, here is another example from our customer, uh, squeal and rattle simulation. So here we are just predicting uh, what is the noise levels or the rattling at the dashboard. So you have a glove box. When you kind of uh, start driving, you might see some vibration in the glove box. Okay? So we are kind of capturing those phenomena in this particular case. Now, the, the biggest challenge in this particular uh, uh, study was we are doing a frequency-based procedure, which is linear, so no contacts are allowed. But you would have to have a relative uh, motion between the glove box and the dashboard. So how are you going to accommodate that? So in Abacus, we do have some special element called uh, connector elements. So you can use these connector elements to mimic the contact between the dashboard and the glove box and simulate the, the rattling behavior. So that, that is a technology which is being used for capturing the squeal and rattle simulation. Now, nevertheless, uh, Abacus also is pretty strong with the acoustic capabilities. We can do a, vibra a vibration acoustic analysis where you can model the cabin with the acoustic domain and have some excitation to the road or to the engine uh, which is going to ha excite your uh, structure. And you can predict the noise levels within the cabin. Okay? So, so this is also another capability what Abacus offers. So in terms of the technology and trend, so I think I've covered about uh, how do you accommodate the road noise using substructure with tire modeling. Uh, we can use the substructure capabilities in Abacus in Adam's workflow. And also we can accommodate strong coupling, weak couplings in acoustic, in acoustic analysis, structural acoustic analysis. So, so this gives you a broad overview on um, the, no, the linear capabilities in Abacus because more often people understand or assume that Abacus is only for nonlinear, but we have been uh, also been used for linear analysis, but people always underestimate us. So that's, so that's the reason why I thought I'll probably uh, here, I'll be here for talking about some of the advanced capabilities with respect to linear simulation. So that ends my presentation. So any questions, I'll be more than happy to take uh, it up. Do have any kind of correlation uh, done to the testing of your API methods? Uh, and uh, it's like, uh, how do you do that correlation? You know, how do the testing, you have enough testing for that, or you kind of outsource it? Uh, so, I mean, uh, so I'm from a software company, so we don't have any kind of a testing uh, done. But we do have customers who have done the testing. We do have papers from our customers who have showed a good correlation with the brake squeal. Uh, so probably we could uh, catch up sometime. I can share some papers with you, the white papers, which shows the correlation between the testing and the simulation. That will be done by you, right? No, I mean, we as a software company, we don't have that kind of a, a facility, but we work with the customers very closely to get the correlation done. So we help them in the methodology development. Uh, 